you know, um, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, at the end of a presidency, um, it is customary for a president to issue pardons. They have the, uh, the, 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 the president has the ability to completely wipe a crime off of someone's record. They also have the ability to commute a sentence, which is where they don't get rid of the crime, but they get rid of the sentence. So you walk free, but you still technically on the books. Com com yeah, a federal crime, of course, any federal crime, uh, a commutation of the sentence. So, for example, um, uh, uh, Obama pardoned, uh, not pardoned. Uh, Obama commuted the sentence of Chelsea Manning. Very good. Incredible. I think that was great. Chelsea Manning got to leave, um, um, you know, federal prison and solitary confinement. We love Chelsea Manning. She's amazing. Um, oh, a lame duck. Yeah, when they're in the lame duck. Yes, that's correct. So it is customary for presidents to issue um, pardons and com commutations at the end. The reason is because nobody can get pissed off at you once you're leaving. Well, they can get pissed off at you, but you're leaving office. You don't got to think about re-election. So you can let criminals off the hook. You can do controversial things. Donald Trump has decided to do possibly the most controversial set of pardons I can possibly imagine. And we have some um, talking about them to do. And we're going to start with a really great article that summarizes this all up. I think the title will speak for itself. Whoops. Trump pardoned four Blackwater contractors who killed Iraqi civilians. Civilians. In a statement, the White House did not mention that 14 people were killed in the unprovoked attack, but it called it a situation turned violent which resulted in the unfortunate deaths and injuries of Iraqi civilians. Let's read a little more. President Donald Trump pardoned four former Blackwater mercenaries on Tuesday who had been convicted for their role in the Nisauer Square massacre that left 14 people dead in Baghdad in 2007. Oh yeah, we're going to be watching the legal eagle one. We're going to be reacting to the legal eagle one. I I have been I haven't watched it yet. But we're going to do that. Just wait. Just wait. We'll react. Don't worry. The killing of innocent civilians, including two young boys, sparked international outrage and public scrutiny into the use of private military companies like Blackwater, providing armed fighters for the U.S. wars and conflicts. Nicholas Slatton, Paul Alvin Slaw, Evan Sean Liberty, and Dustin Laurent Hurd were convicted in the deadly shooting. During the trial, federal prosecutors argued in 2015 that the men should have received harsh sentences for their roles, stating that they had shown no remorse for their actions. Indeed, the defendants have not accepted responsibility for their criminal actions whatsoever and to this day have denied any wrongdoing, prosecutors wrote in their sentencing memo. memo. The three men were sen to sentenced to 30 years in prison. In 2019, a federal judge resentenced the three men a federal appeals court had ruled that because they were military contractors in a war zone, they should not have been sentenced under a law that requires a minimum of a 30-year sentence for the use of a machine gun. Slatton's conviction was overturned. An appeals court ruled he should have been tried separately. He was sentenced to life in prison on first-degree murder charges. He was accused of being the first to fire into the civilian crowd at the square. Okay, so now you got an idea here. And they said... This was a situation turned violent, which resulted in the unfortunate deaths and injuries of Iraqi civilians. So I just want to show you something. We're going to read about what the Ni Sauer Square Massacre was all about. Because I want you to know the types of people that uh, were just pardoned by Donald Trump. Oh, this wasn't drone shit. This was not drone shit. No, this was very, very bad. Ready? The Nisauer Square massacre occurred on September 6, 20, 2007, when employees of Blackwater Security Consulting, now Academy, a private military company contracted by the U.S. government to provide security services in Iraq, shot at Iraqi civilians, killing 17 and injuring 20 in Nisauer Square, Baghdad, while escorting a U.S. embassy convoy. The killings outraged Iraqis and strained relations between Iraq and the United States. In 2014, four Blackwater employees were tried and convicted in the U.S. federal court, one of murder and the other three of manslaughter and firearms charges. All four convicted were pardoned by Donald Trump. 
So let's talk about this. Here's the uh, here's the outline of what actually happened. Okay, just before noon, and warning. By the way, warning. This is not pleasant. So, just so you know, this is not pleasant. Content warning. Okay. Just before noon on September 6th of 2007, a car bomb exploded near the Izidar compound where U.S. and Iraqi officials were meeting, and a 19-man Blackwater tactical support team consisting of a convoy of four trucks answering to the call sign Raven 23 took up positions on the south side of Nisauer Square to secure an evacuation route for the U.S. officials and another Blackwater team providing security for them. The Blackwater commander, Jimmy Watson, had received an order to stand by and not leave the operation center. He was ordered to return to the green zone. However, after Raven 23 entered Nisauer Square, Watson was ordered to lock down the traffic circle to expedite the travel of the other Blackwater team. Shortly after assuming their positions, Raven 23 began firing on civilians, civilians in response to an approaching car, killing 14 and wounding 20 more. During opening arguments for a criminal trial, defense lawyers representing Blackwater argued the men felt that the approaching Kia, a Kia, was credible threat as a possible car bomb and opened fire in self-defense. Prosecutor argues the men did not face hostile gunfire at when they started shooting and continued to shoot despite the lack of threats. The driver of the Kia was shot once in the head by a Blackwater contractor, killing the driver. The Kia continued to roll forward after the driver was killed, according to an eyewitness, and Raven 23 continued to fire on it, killing the passenger, the driver's mother. Eventually, the Kia was, was struck by a grenade, instantly incinerating it. A de State Department spot report published the same day as the incident stated that, it, that 8 to 10 attackers opened fire on Raven 23 from multiple nearby locations, with some aggressors dressed in civilian apparel and others in Iraqi police uniformed after the convoy entered Nisauer Square, Square. The report added that another Blackwater support team who had escorted the officials back to the Green Zone was redirected to support Raven 23. Raven 23 returned defensive fire and withdrew with Bearcats in tow. As Raven 23 was departing Nisauer Square, several members continued to discharge their weapons, causing additional civilian deaths and, and injuries. TST-22 arrived in Nisauer Square after Raven 23 had left. When TST-22 tried to withdraw, its route was blocked by Iraqi army and police vehicles. A U.S. Army convoy arrived, backed by air cover, to escort, escort them back in the green zone. An Iraqi government account of the incident stated that as the convoy drew close to Nisauer Square, a Kia sedan with a woman and her adult son in, it, son in it was approaching the square from a distance, slowly driving on the wrong side of the road, and the driver ignored a police officer's whistle. Wow. You might not even be able to hear that in your car. To clear a path for the convoy. According to this account, the security team fired warning shots and then lethal fire at the Kia. They then set off stun grenades to clear the scene. Iraqi police and army soldiers, mistaking the stun grenades for fragmentation grenades, opened fire at the Blackwater men, to which they responded. Iraqi, in oops. Iraqi investigators also alleged that Blackwater helicopters fired into cars from the air, and at least one car had bullet holes in its roof. Blackwater has denied any of its aerial units discharged weapons. The account by the Blackwater firm differed from the Iraqi government's account. Blackwater's account stated the driver of the Kia had kept driving towards the convoy, ignoring verbal orders, hand signals, and water bottles thrown at the car, and continued to approach even when fired upon. An Iraqi policeman went over to the car, possibly to help the passenger, but the vehicle kept moving, and it looked to the, gu and it looked to the guards as if the policeman was pushing the car back towards Blackwater. In their view, this confirmed that they were under attack by a vehicle bomb because a policeman was trying to stop the car, and they continued firing, killing both people as well as the policeman. In response to the guards' killing of the Iraqi policemen, other Iraqi police officers began to fire at the Blackwater men who communicated to the State Department that they were under attack. State Department employees walking in Department's Baghdad Operations Center on the day of the incident heard a radio call from the convoy. Contact, contact, contact. We are taking fire from insurgents and Iraqi police. According to the Blackwater Vice President, the convoy was hit with a large explosive device and repeated small arms fire. On September 2007, the New York Times reported that during the chaotic incident, one member of the Blackwater security team continued to fire on civilians despite urgent ceasefire calls from his colleagues. It is unclear whether the team member mistook civilians for insurgents. 
but the incident was allegedly resolved only after another Blackwater contractor pointed his weapon at the man who was still firing, killing civilians, and ordered him to stop. Three Blackwater guards who witnessed it later said that they believed the shootings were unjustified. So there. That is the people that Donald Trump decided to use his pardon power to, um, to free. That is who, that is, so when I talk about how completely rotten and evil Republicans are, holy motherfucking God, please listen. Holy motherfucking God, please recognize how fucked up and evil the Republican Party, the norms of the Republican Party are in America. Good night, Mars Blue. Thanks for coming by. Holy shit, it's so bad. And of course, keep in mind that after investigations, it was found that not only did they fucking lie, but many of these, look at this, look at this. A U.S. military official speaking on the condition of anonymity said that it was obviously excessive. The civilians that were fired upon, they didn't have any weapons to fire back, and none of the Iraqi police even fired back at them. This was a U.S. military official who reported this. The Blackwater Guards appeared to have fired grenade launchers in addition to machine guns, according to the report. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's so fucking wild actually unbelievable yeah had a grenade launcher yeah completely fucked up total foobar agreed 100 percent. absolutely unbelievable well remember they fucking killed a police officer who was trying to stop the car they just gunned him up horrible so that's who he pardoned by the way has trump commented on this he pardoned them he doesn't care. They said that, yeah, we, we just looked at this, by the way. This was how the White House described it. I'm sorry. They described this as a situation that turned violent, which resulted in the unfortunate deaths and injuries of Iraqi civilians. That's how, that's how Donald Trump commented on this event. You like that sound effect? Yeah, I do that sometimes. Wild. Really wild, huh? Oh, the, but, but uh, tech debt, multiple... Iraqi police died in that event. Multiple Iraqi police ended up getting shot. Well, they're private contractors. It doesn't even matter. They're out. Yeah, I won't. I won't do it again. I wasn't going to. I was trying to illustrate what happened. Yeah, I know. We could talk about that. But I just, I just wanted to touch on this because it's fucking disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Here's another one. I want to talk about another quick thing. Okay. Let me just see here real quick. Hold on a second. This was one of the people. Uh, wait. Oh, here we go. Wait, let me just see here. Here we go. This was one of the people. Wait, uh, ha have there been any updates of whether Trump can pardon himself? I have no clue. We're going to watch. We're going to watch real quick. We're going to watch Legal Eagles thing because I haven't seen it yet. And everybody told me I need to watch it. I agree, Ace. It makes me sick. <sighs> this was someone who Trump was considering pardoning. This is a reporting by military.com in their in their um, opinions department. Military.com is a very, very popular veterans magazine, as far as I understand it. I, I did as much due diligence as I can. Very, very well respected magazine as far as I can tell. I don't know I don't know if every veteran believes that, but apparently it's very, very, very popular. I pers prosecuted Robert Bales. Justice demands he remains in prison. This was somebody that Donald Trump was considering pardoning. I don't believe they've pardoned him. The pardoning of convicted war criminals puts our national security at risk and is contrary to e our vaunted American ideals of justice and is an affront to every honorable service member. The chance, however remote, that the president might consider pardoning Robert Bales, a murderer of 16 civilian men, women, and children, should be shocking to all Americans. 
every accused service member deserves a defense and every convicted criminal, no matter how horrific their crimes, deserves the full benefit of due process. They do not, however, discern their, deserve their own set of alternative facts. Yet this continues to be the chosen theme of violent service members seeking clemency. These men are not heroes. Of note, no pardoned war criminal committed his violence acts in the heat of battle or under the fog of war. None were brought to court on charges trumped up by rear echelon staff. None were convicted by legal academics with a political agenda. Robert Bales is no exception. Readers as well as the president should have sympathy for Bales. He is a human being. This sympathy temper should be tempered, however, by the fact that Bales committed his crimes with clear mind and conscience. It should be tempered with similar sympathy for v Bales' victims, among them a grandmother shot while protecting her grandchildren, a grandfather shot while his granddaughter clutched at his leg in fear, another grandmother whose skull was stomped by Bales, f a family of nine whom Bales put into a room, murdered, then lit on filer, fire, and a toddler whom Bales shot at close range, but by placing his pistol in contact with her head. That's all we're going to read of this message, okay? Because that's fucking in intense, all right? But that was one of the people who was being helped to seek clemency by Donald Trump, and they considered it. So again, I don't think, I really, really, really do not think that I am being outrageous by saying that Donald Trump is, if nothing else, enabling American fascism. Not just fascism, but mass, but fucking serial murder in the name of the state. Now I want to watch that video. Let's calm down and let's watch the video. Because I really wanted to react to this and I've heard it's fucking fantastic. Um, incredibly fantastic. And it's Legal Eagle talking about just this. So let's listen to what Legal Eagle has to say because, again, I've been um, recommended hey, this video Eagles. a bunch of times and I really, really want to watch it together with you all. So let us Don't. chill for a little bit. We have an, had an intense day. State had nothing to do with those crimes. It's just as simple as evil helping out evil. Uh, yeah, I guess. Worthless sociopath. Well, I mean, but let's be honest. Um, wait, wait, wait. Think about this. Uh, oh, because they were saying that, like, sympathetic as all human beings deserve sympathy. That even the worst human being deserves some level of sympathy. That's all they were saying. I, I, but yes. Anyway, um, the, the fact of the matter, I mean, fair. But the fact of the matter is, nonetheless, that from the justice perspective, we try to treat all people as humans. But yes, I agree this is particularly monstrous. Absolutely. I do think the state had something to do with it, though. Because I want you to note, um, if you... Now, keep in mind that Republican presidents have made it a, um, a regular thing to pardon war criminals. Not just, like, literally, Bush did this too. Reagan did this too. They pardon war criminals. And what that means is that when America goes to war, every person knows, every person who's doing the will of the state knows, hey, there's a chance that my war crime will not, I'll never have to do justice for it. I'll never have to pay justice for it. They know there's a chance that they'll get out of it. And that is how the state uses it. This is a message. This is saying, we don't think you should have to do time for hurting those people overseas. Yeah, oh, I agree, Seb. But you, but every American pre pre president is a war criminal. Anyway, let's see what Legal Eagle has to say about it. All right? Let's fucking see what Legal Eagle has to say. Because Legal Eagle... I want to react to this really bad. So we're going to react to this together. All right? Let's enjoy. Let's enjoy. Let's have a moment. All right? Here we go. Know where to start. I'm just, I'm so furious. And I'm so sad for our country. That they claim to be the party of law and order. The hypocrisy makes it feel like ash in my mouth to even say it. Because there's no depth, no illegality to which the president will not stoop. It's astounding. The president has completed what appears to be the first raft of pardons in the lame duck period. It's a oh yeah, a murder. I forgot. I didn't even talk about the Roger Stone pardons. We didn't even do that yet. I just talked about the war criminals. 
Yes, uh, I intend to talk about that afterwards. Let's watch this. This row of the unpardonable. Though an actual row of murderers are probably less morally blameworthy than the people that actually received the pardons. Actual war criminals who were responsible for killing innocent Iraqi citizens, including women and children. Ridiculously corrupt politicians like Chris Collins and Duncan Hunter who were convicted of and were about to serve extensive prison sentences okay, well, related dude, yeah. to insider trading and also embezzling campaign funds, uh, including but not limited to spending those campaign funds on extramarital affairs. Actual traitors to this country like Paul Manafort, who was a direct conduit to the Russians through Konstantin Kalimnik and Oleg Deripaska, and, of course, the president's cronies, including, but not limited to... Paul Again, convicted. A convicted traitor, by the way. Not even, like, just accused of it. Yeah, Roger Stone. And, by the way, Roger Stone's been in, 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 in activities of the Republican Party since Nixon. Since Nixon. Roger Stone was Nixon's fucking dude. That's how long he's been running and doing evil in the Republican Party. The Republican Party is rotten to its core. Manafort, but also Roger Stone and George Papadopoulos. There's just no end to the depravity. This is unprecedented in its baseness, in its venality. We've just never seen anything like this in the U.S. Effectively, every significant yep. defendant who refused to cooperate with both the Mueller investigation and also just main justice have now been pardoned. The only exceptions being Rick Gates and Michael Cohen, both of whom actually testified and cooperated against the president. And this is tin pot dictator, banana republic level corruption. If this seems like comic book villainy, that's because it is. This now is remember, you all hear me you all hear me talking about how it's comic book level villainy. And now you're seeing the lawyer, good boy Democrats even saying it. Do you, do we not realize that that is actually what's happening? Like, you know, like, holy shit. Do you think that like legal eagle is like a super rampant lefty? Nah, we just know that the fact of the matter is that, uh, is just the, is, 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 is that we have a fucking fascist dictatorship in office right now. And I don't even know. I mean, I think at this point he's done for. But we still don't know. Yeah, this is an institutionalist is pointing out how broken the institutions are. America is in a wild, a wild place. Yeah, good boy. I mean, like, goody two-shoes. You know, good boy Democrat. Like, oh, we're so good. We play by the rules. Not a close case. This is not an issue of red versus blue. This is just pure flat out corruption. It's red versus the future of humanity. And that's what it's always been. And that's what it will continue to be. It will continue to be red versus the future of humanity because the world they push for is one of depravity and sickness and darkness and oppression for everyone, except for them, for them, it's a world of great bounty. They will continue exploiting you, but for everyone else, enjoy. And I guess let's start with the bad news, because on some levels, this is worse than it appears. It's not just that the morally reprehensible and actual criminals have been pardoned. It's that this threatens the very fabric of our justice system. In part, because this is just the opening act. There's no reason to think that President Trump is going to stop with these pardons. In fact, there's very good reason to think that this is just uh, out there to get people tired, that the worst pardons are yet to come. And it's the usual suspects who are the obvious candidates here. There's no reason to think that the president will refrain from pardoning Jared Kushner, uh, pardoning Bill Barr, pardoning himself. Ivanka, Don Jr., Alan Weisselberg, the CFO of the Trump Organization. But President Trump doesn't have those lines. He doesn't feel shame, and he doesn't give a damn about political norms. 
I mean, because what sure. happened here is a really, really big deal. President Trump is pardoning a whole bunch of people who engaged in criminality in furtherance of the president's own agenda, of, for his own campaign, and for other reasons that benefit President Trump personally. Because the problem with pardoning people who engage in actual criminality for the benefit of the sitting president, if the president is allowed to pardon and absolve guilt after the fact, there's a million ways for a sitting president to grift that. Let's take an extreme example. We often talk about how the president could kill someone on Fifth Avenue. But what if the president hired someone to kill a political opponent and then decided to pardon them? Or hey, a less extreme example. Interesting. Let's call wait, it stochastic terror. Wait, you mean like when he pardoned Blackwater people who'd been hired by the United States government to kill people and then he pardoned them? Where the president just says, hey, it'd be really great if someone killed my main political rival. And then if you actually pardoned that person, which potentially the president could do, well, then He's it just incentivizes it. his it. actual murder of political opponents. And while that's obviously extreme, Vladimir Putin has tried this twice with his main political rival, Alexei Navalny. And obviously there's a state law issue here. Murder is generally a state law crime, so well, maybe the pardon out. wouldn't work. But check it how out about after. this? What if the president uh, intentionally engaged in all kinds of campaign finance violations, getting, let's say, billions of dollars for a campaign slush fund, and then just pardoned all the people who engaged in campaign finance violations for the benefit of the sitting president, who would then have the benefit of billions of dollars good point. of campaign funds. That's a good fucking if point. If the president can pardon co-conspirators or pardon those who engage in criminality at the president's benefit, or just simply hand out pardons like thank you cards, there is no end to gaming the system. And of course, on the other side of the aisle, so far, the Republicans have been absolutely silent. Those people who uh, will jump over themselves to fawn over this president, Ben Shapiro, Mark Levin, Tucker Carlson, have said absolutely nothing. Nothing. They won't. And like I said, they won't. And this is the thing. Like, we shouldn't be surprised. They will never say anything. They are a part of it said this isn't a close case this is not this is not my side versus yours this is an affront to the actual rule of law really at this point only ben sass has had the temerity to even criticize the move saying that this is rotten to the core yeah, well it is gee, rotten. thanks ben thank you for your service and by backing those thanks for doing the minimum wow Words up with absolutely no action oh, whatsoever. Fair. Hey, good job, Legal Eagle. Because awesome. there's a lot of damage that's actually going to keep happening uh, before January 20th gets here. And there is absolutely nothing that's in the works to try and stop this. But I, I shouldn't criticize Ben Sass. At least he came forward publicly and at least criticized the president. Everybody else seems to be happy just to sit idly by and silent. Had me in the first and unfortunately, half. it True. gets worse. Uh, contrary to what you might read on Facebook or Twitter, Trump is almost certainly not going to face criminal scrutiny for even pardoning Manafort or Stone or anybody else. Um, absent actual evidence that there was a, a, an explicit quid pro quo be between Trump and uh, his co-conspirators, there's not going to be uh, criminal repercussions. There's just not. And I don't think uh, even an aggressive attorney general in the next administration is going to change that. It's an abuse of power. The, uh, the guardrail is impeachment. And in impeachment <laughs> when you failed. have a couple of days left in failed. the Trump presidency, impeachment is no real guardrail whatsoever. Yep. So for all intents and purposes, it's unlikely that President Trump is going to face any kind of real scrutiny uh, as a result well, of these actions. check that out right after, Max. And while these are Here, uncharted waters, check it absent very strong proof of a separate crime like extortion uh, or bribery, these pardons are not going to be declared illegal. And it's not even clear that if you found this separate criminality that it could be uh, declared illegal, the pardons themselves. And don't expect future state or federal prosecutions of Manafort or Stone. The complications are probably grave enough that it's unlikely that they're going to face punishment for their actual crimes. And like I said, the pardons will continue. The message has been sent that if you 
uphold your silence against who is effectively a, a mafia don. Ha, <laughs> don. You're get it. going to get a pardon. <laughs> you will be rewarded for your service and contravention of justice. Yep. There's no real silver lining there. That die is cast. That norm has been broken. And you can expect that future administrations are going to take note if there are no real penalties Don. for abusing the pardon power this way. And it's ironic, too, because traditionally the pardon power has been uh, grossly underused. There are thousands of people who receive grossly inappropriate sentences every year. For all the good that the justice system does, it does a lot of bad, too. Or at least it's often overzealous in punishing crimes. And there are a lot of people who are in jail that arguably should not be. And historically, presidents are much more likely to underuse the pardon power than they are to overuse it. And to date, we've never seen anything like what President Trump has done. But the whataboutism is strong. People have pointed to the pardoning of Mark Rich by President Clinton. And that pardon rightfully sparked bipartisan outrage. It sparked congressional inquiries. This is not to say that the that particular pardon was in any way just or correct. People were rightly outraged about it. Mm -hmm. But this is so much worse. There was and should have been political fallout for that pardon. But what we're seeing out of the Trump administration is much, much worse. It's dozens of individuals who have a direct connection to the president. And the pardon is being used in a way... Charles Kushner, the father of Jared Kushner. Another pardon. ...that really does undermine the rule of law. And that's, that's not an exaggeration. Because it's going to change the way that political institutions use the pardon in the future. And it's not going to get better unless there are real punishments. Now, uh, I may be your discount John Krasinski, but let me try to give you some good news here. The first is that Paul Manafort is not going to get his townhouses or ostrich jackets back. Uh, under Ex Parte Garland, a pardon does not restore offices forfeited or property or interest vested in others in consequences of the conviction not and bad, judgment. Not bad, not bad, all right. It's okay, uh, so it doesn't matter. He'll at least the Mueller investigation things. will still have turned a profit. You also probably know that True, these Seth. pardons don't really affect state law prosecutions, if there is indeed uh, state-based criminality. We know that there are ongoing investigations, particularly in New York, but I counsel you, don't hero worship the investigators. We've been burned time and time again. Yep, we have. Yes, we sometimes have. Sometimes that's just too much pressure to put on people like New York AG Tish James and Manhattan DA Cy Vance. A lot of the criminality that has been pardoned is purely federal with respect to lying so to happy, federal so. prosecutors, that makes me happy. Uh, with respect to federal campaign finance violations and insider trading. It's, it's unlikely that a lot of those crimes have state law counterparts that could even be investigated and punished, uh, let alone will be. That being said, Paul Manafort was convicted of numerous different tax crimes, and it's likely that New York State has similar state law tax crimes that he could be charged with. And e even better news, uh, recently the New York legislature closed a pardon loophole that would have prevented prosecution of someone who receives a pardon when there is an ancillary uh, New York state law to prosecute them under. So while Paul Manafort was initially successful in appealing his New York prosecutions, it's possible that now that New York has closed this loophole that they can move forward with That'd prosecuting with him that on is good state news. law crimes. It's an open question. We'll see what the New York appellate courts hold. You've also likely heard a lot about the Fifth Amendment with respect to being pardoned. And it is indeed true that receiving a presidential pardon, if you accept it, uh, does limit the scope under which you can claim the Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination. But it's unfortunately not absolute. If you face state law liability, then you can still invoke the Fifth Amendment privilege. Hmm. So this will indeed help both prosecutors and investigators with respect to inquiries related to these pardons and the underlying criminality, but it's not going to help that that much, unfortunately. Additionally, it's possible that the pardons themselves might be crimes. Maybe. 
I wouldn't put too much stock in this, but remember that I said that President Trump is not going to face criminal prosecution for these pardons. Well, it's possible that he might. There's a slim chance, but it's possible. <laughs> We've seen time and time again that these members of the Trump administration, especially the ones who have been around since the beginning, are completely inept. The DOJ has already got- uh, True, true. They're, they're definitely very inept, but guess what? Their ineptiveness has taken the Democrats and the rest of America off guard really bad. So it sucks because they are super inept, but they also have been incredibly effective because everyone underestimated them. Oof. Wind of a pardon for purchase scheme uh, related to Elliot Broidy. And it's possible that there is uh, an explicit agreement between members of the Trump administration. Yeah, and that's these true, pardons. Sathers. Yeah, I agree with it's you. It's possible that. that people did attempt or were successful at buying a pardon. Uh, you can look at the list of people who received pardons, and it's not just Republican cronies and Trump cronies, people who actually engaged in real criminality. Uh, but also those who engaged in real criminality and are also just very, very rich. The people that don't necessarily fit into this category of people who are being rewarded by the president for their service to the president. People who might have the means to actually buy a pardon. And... Ooh, isn't that terrible? You get rich enough, you can buy your way out of any crime on a presidential level? Damn, sounds like a fucking... Plutocracy. If those explicit agreements are out there, it's possible that the, <laughs> the agreement was memorialized and that emails or documents will leak, that the attorney-client privilege will be violated because of the crime fraud exception. Uh, and someone might talk after Trump can't actually pardon people anymore. If there is a actual clear quid pro quo between President Trump or other members of his administration and the granting of a pardon, it could- Let's be real, that already happened. Donald Trump is obviously pardoning the people who have helped him commit crimes to consolidate power in America. He already did that. Um, probably not too, too much longer, maybe like an hour at most conceivably give rise sorry, to that independent was a criminality distracting and thing. potential punishment. Th that's my bad, sorry. That's a big if. <laughs> about an hour, got no type. But hopefully this ends the discussion about uh, future prosecutions or at least future investigations. Uh, past pardons have led to congressional investigations and this one absolutely needs investigations, if not outright prosecutions. Yeah, it is, yeah. And if not true, prosecutions true, true, on true, a federal true. level, then prosecutions on a state law level. And hopefully this represents the absolute zenith of presidential power. At the moment, the president has never been more powerful. The president receives almost unchecked power with respect to executive power and executive privilege. Yep. But these actions are so far beyond the pale that... I hope it forces uh, the citizens and uh, members of Congress to actually act, to actually put some real checks and balances and to scale back some of the power that has been granted from Congress to the presidency. Make no mistake, this is a political Rubicon. This is every bit as bad as it appears. In some ways, we're lucky that they've been so ham-fisted about this. Because there's no hiding it. This isn't 4D chess. This is just plain cronyism and corruption. And it's going to get worse before we'll it gets right. better. Just don't let it wear you down. But Americans did their part. And they voted overwhelmingly to send President Trump packing. We could be looking down the barrel of four more years of this, but luckily he will be leaving office. But there's one last thing to do, which is that we must demand of the future administrations, that they not let these pardons go unchecked, that they cannot allow- Power will never give itself up freely. They will never freely give up power. You have to wield power to remove uh, that type of power from another institution. The presidency is never going to give up that power willingly. They are never going to like just stop doing this. No, it's just not how it works. They, 
Would you like no one gives up power willingly? You have to use structural and systemic um, wielding of power in order to counter power wielding like this. That's the only way. Yeah, I know, right? Right, Pinkwug? Oh, this criminality to go unchecked. There are many different we types of revolution. We assume that the pardon power is near universal, but so much of this is debating how many angels can dance on the head of a pin. Presidential pardons have rarely been challenged. We don't know what the Supreme Court would have said if uh, the— We have a Supreme Court that's almost completely loyal to Donald Trump. Forward pardon of Nixon had been challenged, or the Iran-Contra pardons had been challenged. And we don't know what a Supreme Court would do with these current raft of pardons. And we don't know all of the information the about these particular pardons. Was there an explicit quid pro quo? Is there independent criminality about these particular pardons? The American people have a right to know that particular information, which is why we must demand that the next administration, either through the attorney general or a special prosecutor, investigate the issuance of these pardons. Uh, investigate the hey, underlying criminality itself. If there Welcome is remaining criminality out there, uh, charge them, indict them. Uh, test the sufficiency of the pardon. Test the breadth of the pardons. And let's see what the Supreme Court has to say. That's and good, if the Supreme Court upholds the use of these pardons, then so be it. We can demand a constitutional amendment or other congressional means to... True! That is something people can do. You can demand a constitutional amendment. Hmm. Now we're thinking. Now we're thinking legal eagle. Drop Let's that spicy one at the end. Because that's what Americans deserve. We fought a war to throw off the rule of a king, and these pardons come as close as Americans ever have to reverting back to tyranny. True. Because as bad as these pardons are. Damn. Next time will be worse. Yes, they will, my friend. I couldn't agree with you more, legal eagle. Thank you for that excellent fucking video. Wow, that was good. Holy shit, that was enjoyable. That was a fantastic video. He, yeah, he, let's be honest. Legal Eagle is a very attractive man. Holy fucking shit. Just, you know, looking respectfully. Hey, good night, the twos. Thanks, good ass content. Maybe he's already there, Demon Lord. We can get him. Don't worry, we'll get him. Go subscribe to Legal Eagle. Yeah, I'm not even subscribed to him yet. There we go. Fix that. Legal Eagle's awesome. Based Legal Eagle. Get some lefties in those comments, eh? Get some lefties up in there. All right. Oh, boy. 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 A lot of comments. A lot of comments. Hey, nice. Nice of me. More people telling me I'm mentally ill. Awesome. Woohoo. No, no manifesto. <laughs> you called me out, 404. You want me to add wide people happy? All right. Yes, I see you canceled me. I will add wide people happy to the website, okay? I will. I will add wide people happy. All right, look. Watch. <coughs> Excuse me. Here we go. Here we go. I'm putting a note down. Here we go. We will add wide people happy, okay? Why Add wide Epo happy. There we go. All right, just for you. We will add wide people happy. Wide people happy. Do I think, look, listen, I don't even, I'm not even super attracted to mask people. And oh my God, I do think Legal Eagle is hot. Keck, listen, we can have Keck if somebody makes a Keck mama. If somebody makes a Keck Mama, then we can have Keck. Other than that, nope. Somebody can if somebody makes a good Keck Mama, um, then 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 we'll put Keck. But that's it. That's the only one. Sorry. True devious. Make the face. I don't know how to do it. How do I do it? I can't do it. Now I'm now I look like an idiot. Here we go. Hold on. Let's move everything out of the way. Here we go. There you go. I can't do it. There, you have plenty of little snaps you can try and get. 
All right, there you go. Good luck. Good luck, good luck, good luck. All right. Whew. All right, there is another one I needed to check. I got another thing I need to check. I got to check out Max's art. Max always does such incredible art. <gasps> Mods day. Big love to all the imps. Holy moly, I appreciate y'all. We appreciate you too, Max. Yay. Holy shit. So cute. It is Mods day indeed. Mods day. Yay. I give retweet. Retweet. Mods day. Big love to all the imps. Ah. Oh, it's okay, Marxist Landonist. Don't worry. We all are boomers sometime. You will learn it easily. In time, you will learn how Discord works. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll think about it. Honestly, Benjamin, I really want to get it in a structural... Um, I want to get it structured in a way that matters. I have a lot of work to do this year. Holy fuck. I have, like, a lot of work to do this year with structuring the show, with making changes. I don't know. It's, it's difficult, okay? All right, listen, I got a lot of stuff to do. Oh, Donald... Okay, here we go. Let's take a look. Do we have all of them here, the pardons? But I will, I will. Hold on, let's see. December 2022. Oh, my God. Fuck. Okay. This is all of them? False statements. False statements. Chimer conspiracy. Conspiracy. These are the people. These are the two that he was saying here that did conspiracy with the Trump admin. Oh, shit. I know. We will. Don't worry. We're going to add some channels once the D Discord grows. You want more channels? Grow the Discord. Join the fucking Discord. If you want to if you want to get more channels, then you grow the fucking Discord. There's the Discord. And my YouTube, of course. Holy shit. Voluntary mad manslaughter, aiding and abetting, causing an act to be done. Eight counts. Attempt to commit that voluntary manslaughter. Oh wait, this is the guy. This is one of the people right here. This is one of the 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 um Nisauer Square massacre people. Holy fuck. Roger Stone, obstruction of proceeding, false statements, witness tampering. Paul Manafort, conspiracy against the United States. He pardoned con Paul Manafort of the charge of conspiracy against the United States. You do realize how ridiculous this is, right? Holy fucking shit. Aw, good night, Max, and good night, Sebs. Don't worry, we're only going for a little bit longer. Yeah, pardoning for treason. Jesus fucking Christ. Holy shit. Another one. Conspiracy to commit an offense against the United States, causing false records, causing, causing false campaign contribution, false statements. Pardoned. Conspiracy to commit an offense against the United States false records. He's just convicted. He's just freeing everyone who literally completely fucked up Donald the actual impeachment of Donald Trump. Holy fucking shit. Holy fucking shit. And there might be more by the way. There might be more. There might be more. It's absolutely bonkers. Absolutely fucking bonkers.